All right, let's play a little game here. Which one do you guys think that was? The first one that I played and the second one that I played? Can you tell without me telling you which one it is? I wouldn't think so. Anyways, let's check this stuff out. I wanted to go through and kind of explain this to you guys of the setup. We got the Tonex here. I'm going to be using one of my Angle Savage Mark II lead captures that I did on my old Angle Savage. We got this amp selector here and we got the Fright Power Station and a KSR. Now the Fright Power Station has 6550s, so two of those, and the KSR has uh, 606s. We're also going to use the send out of the JVM to go into it just like this pedal is going in there and just see how uh, it takes you know an amp so there's two different situations here with the five power station we can take the speaker out of an amp and put it in there now for the KSR we, we can't do that uh, the fry is definitely a crap load of options to it and this guy is definitely just a straight-up power amp so yeah I just wanted to show you guys the setup here uh, it's a little easier to do this on the phone let's do this okay first thing I want to say I started this off with the KSR so if you guessed the KSR for the very beginning of the video I don't know how you figured it out but that was it so I was switching back and forth between the Fry and the KSR the Fry is gonna be one and the KSR is gonna be two I have a Tonex that I have hooked up to both of these power amps uh, the whole idea of this video is to come back to these power amps just to see if what I said last year when I was doing a bunch of the quad cortex and all that kind of stuff what is the right power amp for you kind of videos which you can click on this link up here if you want to watch that too but now a year later let's go back to it and see if I feel the same way I did before uh, two things we're gonna do here one we're gonna go through the tone X it is hooked up from the, both of the outputs into the PA50 and the Fryat PS100. So I don't have to have like a line selector or anything and go back and forth with that. Uh, what I do have is the actual amp selector, which I'll be able to go back and forth with these guys. We can just seamlessly switch between them just to get the, a good reference point, right? So I know thanks to the guy on YouTube, I can't remember his name, but who is asking if the PA50 had more thumb to it or more punch. Is there a reason to get the PA50 over the Fry uh, PS100? So I was curious myself because it's been a while. I'd like to see if I feel the same way about this as I did the last time. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I want to thank Ben, who I sold this to. He's been jamming on that, you know, with practice and all that stuff with us. He let me borrow this so I can do, you know, just kind of go back over just some of my thoughts on this. So, so I decided to make a video on this whole thing again. I thought it'd be interesting for all of us. All right, so two things we're gonna do. We're gonna take this Tone X, put it through these guys and just see what that sounds like. And then we're also gonna take the JVM. We're gonna use the line out on that to go through the KSR. And then we're gonna use the speaker output to go through the Fry it. Now, the KSR doesn't have as many options as the uh, Fry Power Station, as the Fry Power Station is a reactive load box. It is a power amp, it has these reactive load uh, options here too. You can attenuate as well. The KSR is straight up power amp. If that's what you need, I think this is a great option. It's, it's pretty compact and easy to take on the road. So let's go ahead and start with the Tone X and what I have is my Angle Savage uh, Mark II capture that I did and it's on DMD Tonex if you want to go to Tonex and, and grab this capture as well it's free um, but it's I think it's a pretty awesome capture I'll go through some of the, my other captures too just to get a difference in the sounds and stuff so we can see if there's a difference in using the KSR or the Fry PS100 all right Let's go ahead and get to some of these tones. Let's go ahead and just play some riffs. Just see what this uh, fry it sounds like.
All right, so I already volume matched these pretty much. And what I did was push the KSR to the point where it's just about to compress the tubes. So I'm getting max tone out of the KSR. The power station also is a 100 watt and the PA50 is a 50 watt. So we're gonna get definitely more power out of the fry it. And it's going to compress a lot later than the KSR would. So I figured it'd be a good comparison to push the KSR as far as it go without compression and then match the fry it to that. So this is the KSR here. Back to fry it. And let's do some chugs on the KSR. <laughs> fry it. KSR. Let's see uh, string definition, right? All right, let's go ahead and talk about the depth and the presence and the options on the KSR. The Fry at PS100 basically just has a presence and depth. If you're going through the return, which typically if you want to use a modeler, I would suggest using return on that because it's louder. There is a line in, but it just isn't as loud. Don't know why that is, but it is what it is. Uh, the reactive load obviously will not engage until you actually have an amp from the speaker out into the speaker or the amp in of the fry it. So these don't even matter until we use JVM and just kind of see what that sounds like. Uh, because basically it's attenuating it and then using the power amp of the fry it to push it. Uh, so the KSR, let's talk about that. This one has a top, bottom, uh, noise feedback, and a switch that goes from hi-fi and guitar. Things about this is obviously the top is gonna to be the presence, the bottom is gonna be the resonance, and NFB is more of a feel of the amp. And it, it does kind of mess with the uh, presence and depth of it. I'll have to show you to just kind of see what it's like. Anyways, the switch here, Usually you want to be in hi-fi mode if you're in a pedal that is dark. Something that is supposed to be going through a line in, uh, just like a Tonex or something like that, or any kind of modeler, you would definitely want to use the hi-fi portion of it. So let's go ahead and mess with the presence and the depth on this and go to the KSR and just mess with the settings on it. So we're on the fry it. Let's just play it. <laughs> All right, let's bring up the depth to about three o'clock. Let's go ahead and bring it all the way up. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and mess with the presence here. Let's bring this back to about three o'clock. I, I felt like that was a little much uh, with it all the way up. Let's go up to three o'clock with the presence. Actually, first, let's hear what it sounds like without it. 
go to three o'clock. I like that. That's a, that's a good tone for that. Let's go. I want to show you just like I did in the last video that this is kind of like the 6505 plus where it's like uh, when you get to three o'clock, that's when the presence starts kicking in. So check it out. <laughs> But back here, it's not really much. Until you get to about three o'clock. So that's where all the magic happens. Now, I like this at three o'clock there too. So three and three. Another cool thing about the power station is that you got two channels. Uh, the PS100 does you can swap between them with different levels, different settings. Let's go over to the KSR PA50 here. Let's see what that sounds like, you know, just without messing with it. All right, let's go ahead and mess with the top and we'll bring it up to about three o'clock. Oh yeah. That sounds freaking awesome. All right, let's bring up the bottom up to three o'clock, see what that sounds like. Ooh. Let's go ahead and go back to the fry and just see what that sounds like. Because that's at all three o'clock, right? The presence and depth. KSR. That sounds sick. I really dig that. That sounds great. Uh, let's go ahead and mess with the NFB and just kind of see what this does, all right? So we're gonna go over to uh, nine o'clock. I'm just gonna dial this while I'm playing it. Let's go all the way down. So that is basically, when we go over to the left, it's definitely more presence. And then when you go over to the right, it's a lot more depth to it. Sounds pretty good, I have to say. So I'll just go ahead and show you the, uh, the switch. So here's what it sounds like. So you see what I mean? You could take a pedal that's like, usually the ones that go in the front of an amp, it's like, I, I guess it's actually preamps that are a lot more higher end. And that would be good for that piece there. Uh, so if you put it into the guitar side, I think it would compensate for how sharp and piercing it is. Let's, let's just go back and forth with this. Okay. So the hi-fi definitely sounds a lot better with the Tonex here. All right, let's mess with the NFB just to get it where I like it. That sounds awesome. All right, now let's go over to the Fry 
and see, compare it now. I feel like I need a little more volume on this one now. Let's bring that up just a tad. Okay, that's better. Let's go back to the KSR. Oh man, it's so close. This one, the power station definitely sounds like it's a little mid scooped uh, to, to my ears. Uh, let's go back over to the frat. P KSR. See what I mean? All right, so what do I want from this power station? Let's probably give it a little more presence. There we go. Okay, so here's the KSR. Yeah, I feel like I pushed the presence too far on that one. Let's bring it back a little bit. Let's just see how piercing the KSR can be. Let's go all the way up. Oh, crap. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty loud. All right, one of the things I want you guys to notice is I have this uh, little dB meter. And it's, I got the cab over here out of the, the scene and it's pointed to the dB meter. So we should get a pretty good representation of how loud this stuff is, comparably, right? Um, this is as loud as probably the KSR can get. Now the Fryat, let's see what we can do with that. I might be clipping on the, uh, the WAV file here, but in essence of trying to see how loud this can get. Okay, so it's not, with 100 watts and 50 watts, it's not a big difference, but I do feel the tube compression with it coming in later does make a difference. You can definitely get away with this PA50, no problem in the band situation with two guitar players. You can do it, totally. But I still like to have that little bit of extra power. Not to say that I like to compete with my guitar player, sorry Ben. <laughs> but it just, I don't know, I just like to have a little bit more of that. So, so far, let's just listen to these two one more time. That's the uh, Fryat. Here's the KSR. They both sound freaking awesome. I love it. Let's go ahead and switch over to a different, uh, like a model here. Let's go over to the 5153, the red channel. See what that sounds like. All right. That's the KSR. Here's the Fry. That's interesting. There's a lot more low in there. I don't think that was the case with the last model. That's weird. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and give this a shot here. Uh, let's go back over to KSR PA50. Fry it. Ah, 
man, they both sound freaking awesome. All right, let's go ahead and go over to the second part of this video where we're going to take the JVM and hook that up to the Friday Power Station. Uh, we're going to try both the line in and the speaker or amp in for that. But with the KSR, we're only going to use the send out of the JVM into it and compare that. All right, let me go ahead and get the setup. We'll be back. Okay, I got the setup again. So we got the JVM going through the KSR and the, the send out is going through the line in into the front of the KSR. So we're using that power amp uh, from the send out of the JVM, but we're also got this hooked up to where the speaker output is going through this, this amp selector uh, and we're just using the power amp in here too. So we'll get to tell the difference between what the KSR's uh, ability to just be a power amp uh, compared to a Marshall's power amp. Let's just check it out, right? So right now we're on the Marshall amp. So this is what it sounds like. Now you're going to have to excuse the uh, ground loop going on here. Um, it is what it is. So here it is. Here's the Marshall. <laughs> And this is channel two. We're going to have to turn that down every time. This is channel two and the orange channel uh, a switch on the JVM. I, I like that channel. Here it is. All the good Marshall stuff right there. Now let's go over to the KSR and see what that sounds like. So we're on the KSR now. I think that sounds pretty good. I think that that's pretty close to the Marshall, but still the, the power amp on the Marshall just has something about it. Let, let me go back to the Marshall. It has a certain kind of bite to it. Uh, it's hard to explain. You know, it's like the, the, it's that plexiness about a Marshall. I don't know what you can call it. It's just that top end uh, rock and roll sound. It's, it's hard to explain. Now the, the KSR. Tell you what, let's mess with the top end to see if we can get it to sound more like it. Here's the Marshall. It's close. Uh, I think the power amp in the Marshall for the Marshall is designed for the Marshall. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and move over to the Fryat and see what that sounds like with the difference between the line in and the amp in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. One minute. Okay, so there's two versions of this I'm going to have to go through for the JVM. First, I have the preamp out going to the return of the, this uh, Fryat. I'll be able to listen to the actual amp by turning the Fryat off with this switch here. And then when I turn it back on, 
it's going to go into the line mode. What I'll also do is go through the amp in from the speaker out of this and do the same test as well. And then you guys can decide which one's better for you. And I can give you guys my thoughts on this, this whole video. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. Right now we are bypassing the Fry power station and we're just playing through the Marshall through the cab. There's nothing in between. <laughs> Man, I love that JVM. That thing is freaking awesome, dude. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and use the line in. And I already level matched this, so it should be the same. It's on now. All right, let's go ahead and use the Marshall. Let's see if we can match it with the power station. So let's go over here and let's bring up the depth and bring the presence back a little bit. Line in. I still need to bring the presence back. Marshall. Well, there we go. It's, it's what I would have expected. If you're taking the preamp out of the amp and not going through uh, the, the power section of an amp, it just, it's just really bright and tinny sounding to a degree. So, it still sounds good through this, no problem. I don't know what situation would use this, but this is more of a test to compare to the KSR. With uh, just the amp, it's just nice and chunky and feels like a, a nice real Marshall. With the line in, it's, it just loses some of that girth and that bite to it. All right, so now I'm gonna set this up so where we're going through the uh, amp in of the Fryat from the speaker out of the JVM and then we'll switch those two. So let's check it out. All right, so now we have this hooked up to where the JVM is going from the speaker out into the amp in of the power station. And when I turn this off, it's just gonna be the Marshall. And when I turn it on, I'll be able to use the reactive load side of the Fry power station. So I can use the warm and deep and the bright and the edge. Right now, I got them at flat. So let's hear what that sounds like, right? Here's just the Marshall. Here's the Fry Power Station. Marshall. Fry it. And obviously I'm pushing the power amp so it matches the Marshall. Um, so I did that beforehand uh, just so we can not hear a difference in volume and stuff. But I think they sound just alike. It's pretty damn transparent, I have to say. 
Uh, let's go ahead and use some of the reactive load and just see what that does for it. So we're doing warm and bright right now. And here's the Marshall. That is so much more rich. Just having it as a reactive load and then being attenuated so then it goes through the power amp. There's definitely something about that, you know, it just to you can add more to your amp if there's something more you want from it. So let's just say you got an amp that just doesn't have enough punch. You could totally go through the Fry power station, use that power section and use the reactive load to give it more. So that's freaking awesome. Let's go ahead and go all the way up edge and deep. Just, so here's the Marshall. Here's the fry. That was definitely a good bit louder. <laughs> uh, yeah, so pff, I love the fry power station. It, <laughs> you know, not to be uh, already saying what what's my preference or anything, but just the amount of stuff that you can do with this fry power station is awesome. The KSR PA50 is definitely really good too uh, for just tones and stuff. If that's all you need, uh, go on to use Marketplace and just see if you can find one. Uh, if you just need something that push a modeler. Now I've had an orange pedal baby. That's awesome too. If you don't want to worry about tube amps, I'd say that that's the next best option. It's a class AB power amp instead of class A. I, I just, the class D stuff is just so sterile to me. I, I just, it does not make me happy at all. Now the class AB stuff like the orange pedal baby, that's good stuff. But of course, if you have the chance and you can go through a power amp, like say if you just want to go through one of your amps and stuff, I would go that route before getting any of that pedal baby. It's it's all about like what you want to carry with you, right? Uh, if you don't like the specific tone, like get get some like amp that you don't really care too much about, but it has tubes in it. Get a cheap one of those, and then go through the return of that. And as long as it's got a good power section with some presence and depth and stuff, you're golden, man. And I have to say the Tonex is awesome for that stuff because it already has the depth and the presence in there. I definitely love the Tonex. It's, that's definitely some, a platform that has worked very well for me. And I don't have to worry too much about it if I play live with it, with it getting busted up and stuff. It doesn't cost that much. I mean, I could probably find one used for 300 bucks or so. I got my quad cortex thing, but I wouldn't want to use that out live, you know? Uh, that's really a studio piece for me. The Tonex has killer sounds on it. I would venture to say that it's on par and sometimes a little better. How dare you? It just has a little more mids to it. Now, between these two, let's go back to that. Between these two, this one, just like my last video uh, with the PVJSX and the uh, X2. I feel like the KSR PA50 is kind of like the JSX where it just has more mids to it and it just has a marshally push. So the KSR is good for that kind of thing. The Fryat Power Station, it seems like there's definitely a cutout in the mids there, just like the Triple X2 when I was doing that. Uh, it definitely has that characteristic and that's when I'm comparing them to. If you like something that a little more mid for it and if you want just tones, and you want to push a modeler through uh, a uh, something like the KSR PA50, or maybe you got a preamp pedal or something like that. I think the KSR PA50 is perfect for it. Now, if you're an amp head guy, tube amps and all that stuff, I would say go with the PS100. You can get transparent noise sounds out of the PA100 using it if you just want your amp, but you can also add some punch to it 
You can attenuate it. It's got an effects loop on it. It's got two channels that you can switch to. The options, it's all there. As a load box too, come on. But like I said, if this is pretty damn compact and I hope they come out with a rack portion of this, this PA50. So KSR, if you're seeing this, I think everybody's wanting to see the rack version of this guy. And maybe even at 100 watts, I would say. Uh, hell, just go ahead and put in the load box and all that stuff too, and then you're golden. I have kept my power station just because of the versatility. If it was just tones that I was after, I'd probably just go with the KSR PA50 and call it a day. All right, guys, tell me what you think. I think that, you know, both of these kind of tap out with, you know, how much low end they have. I know that was the question, one of the people on YouTube. The reason why I think the Fry is a little bit better is because it's louder and it's not gonna compress as much the louder you get it, uh, or quicker, I should say. Because the KSR was definitely, I was like on that verge of pushing it to the point where I was happy and then it was just kind of compressing. But the PS100, I could push it all day and get anything I want. Personally, that's my opinion. I think I'm kind of stuck with the same opinion that I had the last time I uh, played these two together in the same room uh, last year. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I am 90 away, 90 subscribers away from a thousand. <laughs> I haven't really marketed this channel or anything, but help me out. Get me up there so I can make cooler videos. Come on in, like, and subscribe. DMD out. See what I mean?